Dear listeners, welcome to another edition of the podcast, Let's Talk About Chess. In this episode, number 24, we virtually travel to Ljubljana in Slovenia, and I'm going to talk about chess and psychology with Doctor of Psychology and University Professor Jana Krivec. Her book, Improve Your Life by Playing a Game, was recently published by Thinkers Publishing. It is a fascinating book, not only for chess players. In this episode, we are going to talk about the book, chess, and of course, psychology. If you are new to the podcast, push the subscribe button to make this podcast more popular and to give many people the chance to, to listen to the show. If you want to support me and the podcast, you can buy me a coffee or two on coffee.com. I will put a link in the show notes. Every donation, every small donation helps me to keep the podcast going. My name is Erik van der Reem. Enjoy the show. Dear listeners, today I have another special guest in the podcast. She's a woman grandmaster who won the Slovenian Women Championship seven times. She played in 11 chess Olympiads and some other various team events for her country, Slovenia. She's a doctor of psychology and a university professor, and she's a book author. So lots of topics we can talk about, and I'd like to welcome Dr. Jana Krivek. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Eric, for your introduction and having me in your show. Yes, yes, it's exciting. Where are you right now? You know, people might not, you are not very active anymore as a chess player, perhaps, so maybe you can tell me something about bit about yourself and uh, how you started playing chess, for example. Yeah, <laughs> as you said, uh, yeah, right now uh, I'm more focused on my academic career as a university professor. Um, it takes uh, a whole person <laughs> to do it properly. But yeah, at the same time, I will never stop being a chess player. That's why I try to combine um, chess with my work and uh, yeah in a different way maybe than I did uh, till now um, yeah as you said um, it sounds like I have uh, I had a long chess career <laughs> at 11 Olympiads uh, by itself uh, means 22 years of yes. uh, active <laughs> playing <laughs> just <laughs> on Olympiads um, well I, I didn't started that young. I had um, around nine, ten years when I started to play more seriously. Um, my father, he was a chess enthusiast, mm -hmm. no titled player, but uh, he really enjoyed playing chess. And uh, yeah, he, he introduced me to chess uh, in a um, very pleasant way so uh, I took it as a fun as a uh, and I enjoyed playing it since the beginning so uh, and you know not like some parents who um, demand uh, success from their children from the mm -hmm. very early beginning so uh, I was lucky from then that point of view um, because I really believe that uh, especially for for children uh, just has to be fun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the most important thing is that they enjoy um, things that they do. I mean, for the grown-ups is the same, but we, all, yeah. uh, we forget about that too, <laughs> too many times, but this, and, um, especially for children, uh, it's very important that, uh, you know, just does not discuss them through the uh, too much pressure and uh, demands for success. So, yeah, I started as a um, enjoyment and uh, I met a lot of new people, uh, visited new places and that's something that um, triggered me <laughs> to chess uh, from the beginning um, and of course um, with time when I get to know the game in depth then um, um, I love the game by itself and all the opportunities uh, that it provides uh, 
you can you know uh, show yourself through the game yourself through the game of chess you, you can be creative um, every game is a creation by itself and um, that is something that um, I don't know at least me <laughs> uh, I didn't find it anywhere else in uh, no activity except chess um, that's why I think once chess Got, gets you <laughs> it does not uh, let you till the end so um, I still like to play chess and I will never completely drop off it so um, yeah but but, um, but you were obviously quite talented then because you were uh, okay you won seven yeah. times the Slovenian championship for women and you played in the Olympic uh, and you were also the highest rated Slovenian uh, women ever right yeah. For some time now, Laura Unuki is uh, mm -hmm. the highest rated. Uh, she was also world champion in these youth categories. Um, but yeah, uh, I um, achieved good results quite uh, quite quickly, which is something that <laughs> this motivates you. Then of course, yeah, motivates you on your uh, way for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, I remember when I went to my first um, junior world championship, I was fifth. So yeah. Uh, I guess it is um, a sign of a talent, but of course we all know that in chess, as in, uh, as in any other activity in life, uh, the work and persistence is something that uh, is most important. Uh, and um, yeah, on the way I had also good trainers, proper trainers uh, for the particular period, um, which is, I think, very important in the development mm -hmm. of a chess career. And yeah, um, in Slovenia, for quite some time, I was uh, on the top. I was seven times uh, national champion, uh, which is, of course, something that um, yeah motivates you, gives you the additional <laughs> pleasure. Um, to achieve the good results and yeah that's, so that's, um, yeah. um i think yeah i have uh, most of the time i have really nice memories on my career of course there were moments uh, that were um, that were stressful that there were sadness but that is something i think that uh, is also um good in your life that you uh, experience such um ups and downs and you know how to cope with them uh, but okay the main goal of mine was to achieve the uh, the gm woman gm title mm -hmm. and um, when i achieved that i think uh, it uh, also changed a bit in my perception of chess career um, i started to play more for um, just for fun and <laughs> uh, you know uh, put behind the training and stuff yeah. and uh, it, it shows in the game and in the openings, preparations, and of course, it's not the same anymore. And um, yeah, but then the job came. And mm -hmm. do you still play chess a bit yourself right now, or or do, uh, how, do you play some tournaments? Okay, it's very difficult right now, of course, in the pandemic. But normally, mm -hmm. do you play one or two tournaments per year or something? Yeah. Okay. Now, when this pandemic appeared. Uh, I didn't play any tournament. I played a few tournaments online, uh, just uh, the blitz tournament. Mm -hmm. <laughs> rapid. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, um, I play one, two tournaments per year for sure. Um, for example, Croatian League, Slovenian League. Um, I played Korzika not last year, but the year before. And um, yeah, till now I was still in Slovenian... Um, national team so i uh, i like to go to olympiad or european team mm. championships it's a special special feeling special team spirit and uh, i really enjoy uh, that kind of tournament so this year it will be in slovenia the european team championship so maybe i don't know i will uh, join okay. <laughs> and we're you know this it's also very nice because um, you meet people that you um, that became part of your life and you can meet it only on chess tournaments, some of them. And um, yeah, you know, against Unasun, we're all one big family. So. Yes, yes, yes. The, the chess world seems to know 
each other. It's it's a small world, isn't it? Mm. But it has become okay. But say the chess world has become it's grown, of course, last year because chess is now far more popular. Yeah, I think you saw mm. also the Queen's Gambit, for example, and you saw the yeah. online boom. What what do you think of that? Yeah. Um, do you also notice it in Slovenia, for example, that there are more people playing chess or something, or there's more interest in chess in general? Yeah, I mean, of course, a, a series like Queen's Gambit. Uh, <laughs> for me, this is uh, an interesting phenomenon. And of course, um, I appreciate things like this because uh, chess becomes more popular, no doubt about that, uh, among general public. A um, lot of friends, for example, just told me, oh, Jan, and did you see there is a series about chess and it's like chess would gain on the importance. Uh, but yeah, on the other hand, it's, you know, <laughs> so shallow because a series like that does not make chess uh, a better game. <laughs> chess yeah. is a beautiful game by itself. And uh, I mean, the series is just uh, the, maybe a small part and a bit uh, um, exaggerated part of, of the, the whole game. And it does not show the, the depth of chess and its all beauty uh, that it contains. But at the same time, of course, it's good for, for sponsors, for the population of chess. And um, yeah, I don't know why, but uh, I think all chess players, we love to see when other people uh, are interested in chess. And uh, <laughs> yes. I don't know, at least uh, with me, it's like that, that uh, whoever speaks about chess, it's not a problem for me to uh, to um about this game because I really uh, believe in chess and I really okay. love this game and I think uh, it can bring um, a lot of good to yeah. the world to the people and um, so that other notice these uh, positive things uh, makes me happy and uh, yeah serious like these uh, in this manner are very welcome. Um, Welcome for chess, yeah. Welcome yeah. for, yeah. That's 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 true, yeah. And you also have a second love for, so to speak, yeah. That's psychology. You're a, a doctor of psychology. Uh, when did that start during your school career, or what triggered you to get to know more about psychology? Was it chess, for example, that got you into psychology or not? Um. Yeah, well, um, of course, I studied psychology and uh, I made a PhD out of psychology. Um, I don't know. I think psychology is also an um, interesting field by itself. You know, it's uh, you can find it, find it in everyday life, everywhere. And it's something I think, again, a bit maybe like chess, uh, it's useful for everyone. <laughs> um, I had uh, several different um, interests when I finished high school in Slovenia. We have to decide what we have to go to study. And I like sport, I like art. Uh, but um, chess at that point was um, very much incorporated in my life. I was a lot uh, of time away and uh, on the tournaments and to enter. Um, physical education faculty or uh, art faculty, I should have studied before and make, make some exams. So um, psychology was also uh, very interesting to me. So that's how I decided to go to study psychology. Um, so not, not just because of chess for sure, but during the study and uh, the process of research and now uh, teaching psychology, I can see so many parallels um, in chess, of course, in life also, but in chess, in, in, uh, in the manner that, um, I don't know, I find chess as a natural therapeutic <laughs> thing, you know, if you approach it in a proper way. Uh, so this is something that really fascinates me and, uh, uh, during the whole study, whenever I see uh, experts speaking from the psychological point of view, uh, I just cannot help myself thinking, okay, we can do, we do this in chess, you know, and uh, that's why I needed to put 
my thoughts about this comparison in uh, in a book you know and uh, <laughs> this is um, how my book improve your life by playing a game came, came out yeah and I, I, I also noticed that um, a lot of successful people um, you know are possessing these skills uh, that are thought through psychology or through chess um, so yeah at the end you know all these fields are not something completely scientific but you know it, there are something that with some self-reflection, I think most of the people can and should do during their life. And I feel like they are missing something if they don't uh, approach life in such a way. Okay, it's, it sounds a bit cocky now, but uh, um, yeah, I think um, it's good to read such thoughts in order to maybe start thinking in this direction. Yeah, we can talk about your book in a, in a second. Um, did, did you have to make a choice at some point, either chess or, or psychology? Yeah, it, it was very interesting. Uh, on the beginning of my study, um, I went, uh, okay, first I came to, to university and I thought that I, I will not oblige to be there all the time. That was my uh, <laughs> perception of... Uh, higher education but in Slovenia we have quite uh, how to say uh, uh, rigid school system you know and um, uh, a lot of professors and system is not so open to um, extracurricular activities or um, activities you know that are not that are quite serious I played uh, for the Olympic team at that time and um, I didn't just play chess for, for fun. And um, okay, then I asked the professors if I can go because I had a world junior chess championship and Olympiad one after another. And I missed quite uh, a lot of <laughs> uh, um, time mm -hmm. on the beginning of the study. And of course they said, no, I have to decide whether I sh you should play chess or you uh, or you want to study so I said okay I have to leave something I have to uh, drop uh, out of uh, faculty because it's not so easy even to come to psychology you need to have good grades yeah. and not, sure. you know I never tried to uh, get something for free I always you know um, did my best and um, chess was never um, it was a burden for me when I came from tournament that, uh, you know, I missed the, the content they, uh, they had uh, in the classrooms, but I somehow um, managed to, to uh, get it by myself. And okay, then I, uh, you know, at the time I'm already, uh, <laughs> I'm happy that I played chess because uh, it already taught me how to fight, so I didn't. <laughs> I didn't just uh, let it go and say, "Okay, I will not go to a tournament or something mm -hmm. like that." I will pass a year. <laughs> so uh, I went further. I went to a rector and uh, to, to the dean of the faculty, um, asked him what to do, and he said to write. Um, application and then I went for a tournament and when I came back I didn't know <laughs> what would be the decision whether I can continue with the um, with the classes or not and they uh, with some uh, additional requirements they uh, let me continue and that's how yeah um, I I finished also the, the the university and played chess at the same time but um so, in, so, so what, what did what did your parents say, for example, at the time? Did they say, "Yana, you should uh, should go for uh, an academic career, or should continue to play chess?" <laughs> I don't know if I told them. I guess I did. I, I don't remember. <laughs> but in general, they supported me, and uh, okay, that's good. yeah. Um, so yeah. I, I had support from their side, uh, which is, of course, <laughs> very important. Yeah, that's yeah. important, of course. For the further career, um, 
not purely, you know, that in the classroom, um, chess um, was um, a good thing because I combined, you know, and um, combined the contents and I made my diploma on the field of chess, my PhD on the field of chess and people who were on my way of development, also academic development, I, I was then um, for a short period researcher at faculty of computer science and then mm -hmm. at one uh, research for artificial research institute for artificial uh, intelligence and that people really understood you know how um, chess um, contributed to my way of thinking and developed me in this sense so in 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 my further career development chess was something that um, was taken from a positive side And you could always combine a bit chess and uh, psychology in your 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 career, more or less. Yeah, you said told me something about your PhD. Can you tell me something about that? About it? It was in two thousand and uh, yeah, two thousand four, two thousand four, right? <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> Yeah, yeah, chess is, is a very welcome domain in the research of cognitive psychology mm -hmm. uh, because it's really complex game, so it can in a way imitate uh, life processes, <laughs> processes that are going on in an uh, everyday situation. Uh, at the same time, it can um, range the level of expertise with elevating um, we have clear rules so we can adjust some uh, extract some attributes for example in my phd i also extracted some attributes from crafty and ripka and uh, made some analysis in uh, um, analysis and uh, in combination with the reconstruction of chess variants of different skilled chess players um, so yeah it's a um, very good domain for the researchers in cognitive psychology, uh, which was also a field of my uh, PhD. So um, yeah, in this manner, uh, I was very privileged <laughs> that yeah. I had the access to top level players that I could um, include in my uh, research, in my experiment. Um, okay. And I think the data itself represents um, <laughs> a big value because uh, yeah I adjusted some programs and um, gathered quite a few just players of different uh, skill uh, levels and uh, sorry. <laughs> and yeah and um, you can you know um, make uh, an abstract conclusions that are valid for the functioning of, of human mind uh, so that the results are general uh, can be generalized on mm -hmm. the population and on different fields as well as well as well this was shown in several previous uh, studies so um yeah yeah chess and psychology was it's always been quite an interesting field for a lot of uh, people and uh, researchers yeah, there are some um, interesting books one of the first one was uh, thought and choice in chess by uh, de groot which is a mm -hmm. dutchman and compatriot of mine and uh, books like winning with chess psychology by paul benko for example maybe mm -hmm. you know some of these books and uh, the psychology of the chess player by ruben fine so did you read those books or something or did you get some inspiration from that yeah I, of course i read some in um in scientific studies you have to um base your research on scientific articles mostly yeah. uh so, yeah so there are a lot of articles based on on chess and as i said they made studies with uh, eye trackers um um yeah making experiments to to show how you know um, a chess player <laughs> search uh, over the board how they store information how they uh, you know i also uh, did the research on the field of um, information processing how we um, encode information how we recall um, how big 
chunks experts have you know how how is knowledge organized with experts or with uh, amateur amateurs um do we have better cognitive capacities than uh, other people which was not shown <laughs> in not my <laughs> okay so, <laughs> uh, at least in the field of mem memorization Actually, um, okay. yeah um so um yeah the process of um organizing information um, and yeah this uh, other field of more general psychological processes that are uh, going on mm -hmm. <laughs> in the chess players minds during uh, playing chess so, yeah okay yeah now we uh, can talk a bit about yeah we can talk a bit about your book of course now right it's called mm -hmm. uh, maybe not many i haven't seen many um reviews about it well it's called the book is called improve your life by playing a game mm -hmm. um, uh, it takes on a journey more or less through a wide range of topics from psychology and explains these topics by putting the reader in the role of a tournament chess player right mm -hmm. um, have mm -hmm. you ever considered well the book is called improve your life by playing a game have you um, thought about it to include the word chess in it by playing by <laughs> you know, so improve your life by playing a game of chess. That's what I yeah. thought. <laughs> yeah, I had this comment from people that oh, okay. read my book. <laughs> um, of course, I thought about it because um, the base of the book is uh, thinking during the game of chess and uh, processes that are going on during the whole chess career and the process of training, playing after the tournament and so on. But my other main point is uh, that it doesn't have to be chess exclusively to learn um, or reflect things that I was describing in the books. Mm -hmm. So that is why I um, put the word game in the title and not chess, because uh, then someone might think that chess is that they should play chess in order to, um, you know, um, to realize this psycholo psychological processes behind it. Um, so I wanted to generalize it, it as much as possible, um, just to put chess as, as an example of how one activity uh, can be rich in uh, psychological processes that you use in everyday life everywhere. Um, and how you can master these skills through the game or any other activity that you okay. it can be sport, it can be business. So you know, this transfer among the fields is very important. That is, uh, I think, uh, the, the, also one of the emphasis, emphasis of the book, the, that you have to transfer, uh, that you have to realize the skills that you possess or you train during some activity and you have to transfer it to other fields as well otherwise it's uh, of no use if you don't know what you possess and use that mm -hmm. <laughs> that's why yeah okay. again <laughs> okay no, that's why is it again not only chess but also could also be poker or drafts or anything yeah. else or yeah, is it, mean, is it is it is a bit focused on individual sports then, or individual games that you play alone, or also is it also um, applicable to to team sports, for example? No, it's applicable to to yeah many activities. Um, not only, for example, in the book, I always have some at the end of the chapters. I have some exercises, and one exercise is derived from chess. It's for a chess player. Uh, chess players, but other exercises um, for more general <laughs> reader, <laughs> general public, and you know um, the the processes like I don't know goal setting, motivation, um, learning from the masters, uh, delayed reward. This is something that you know can be learned from each activity if you approach it in the proper way. Yeah. So I know chess. The most. That's why I could describe it through the example of chess the best. Okay. Uh, I cannot speak about poker, but uh, I, I believe that uh, all successful people in the particular field has to go through these um, 
processes and uh, also I included a, a lot of um, quotes from very different famous people from uh, philosophers to basketball players to businessmen um, uh, and you know I wanted to show how they incorporated these skills into um, their wisdom or <laughs> well, I mean they made it a wisdom uh, and you know yeah. first they had to realize it's important so um, and use it on, on the way and using those quotes and proverbs by from uh, famous people was it in was it already in your mind in this concept of making this book or how how did you approach the book how did you want to uh, yeah. how would did you want to have the book and how did you when did you start for most of all yeah. with with the idea and concept or is it a, an ever going uh, concept which started with your uh, phd thesis for example yeah i mean even before i would say oh, okay. it's, it's a long process behind the book it's i didn't uh, write a book uh, in a way that i sat down and uh, i don't know for a month and i wrote uh, the whole book. No, it no. was the process of uh, the idea, the process of thinking was uh, old. Um, then, okay, it's also my way of writing things. I just put key points and then I uh, add things. Whenever I uh, think of something, I put it, <laughs> you know, in the, the particular chapter. And uh, then when I see, aha, uh -huh, this, this person said this, I, this, this would be interesting for, for my book. And then, um, yeah, I would say that towards the end of the process, um, I started to think how the reader would get the message in the best way possible and how I would um, send the message you know, in, a, in, in the most interesting, and vivid way. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, that's why yeah. I incorporated also, for example, the, the previous version of the book didn't have the key takeaways and the, the um, exercises at the end. I call it minute for self-reflection because this is <laughs> what I want to achieve with the book to, for a reader to be self-reflected. Uh, and, uh, you know, I also had a friend who helped me um, Mateguit, who said, okay, you're uh, writing a book in uh, uh, 21st century, so it has to be for the people in <laughs> this uh, era. So uh, it has to be uh, also um, attractive visually. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it's not just, it, it should not be just text, but it should no. be more um, dynamic. It's very dynamic. Yeah, that's what I wanted to ask you. Yeah, because the, the design of the book is really, uh, well, it's not a normal book, <laughs> so to speak. <laughs> and it's not a book you read, you start from, from the first line to the, to, to the back, mm -hmm. but you, you can pick it up and read a chapter and then you see yeah. quotes, you see statistics, you see some pictures, you see some mm -hmm. um, exercises. And sometimes yeah. you even see a chess diagram. Yeah. <laughs> 15, I counted, 15 <laughs> chess diagrams. So it's not really a, a chess book mm -hmm. to improve your game, but it's more a, a book to improve not only your... Yeah. Also your, your personality, isn't it, right? So not your, not only your tip, but yeah. your personality as well. Yeah. By uh, using chess so. mm -hmm. as a chess as the, uh, as the, as the uh, yeah, initiator or something, how to say yeah. it. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I hope so because... Um, I think um, things in life should be clear and uh, straightforward and you, you need to know the, the main point, the meaning of things. This is the most important, not just, you know, <laughs> too many words and then at the end to know what you have read. And I also wanted um, to design the book as a workbook, you know, that it's not something that you read and put uh, away for the rest of your life, but something yeah. that you might return to and it's worth looking uh, looking inside this, uh, again sometime when you uh -huh, you say I, I want to remember something again I want to remind myself about it again uh, sometimes in the future um, and that is how I wanted uh, to design the book and I'm very happy 
when people say I read it at a glance, you know, I read it very quickly. <laughs> uh, uh, that means that it's readable and that, um, yeah, um, it's not difficult to read it. Uh, no, that no, is something just... that, yeah, people from uh, uh, from academic world uh, also taught me that everything, even very complicated things at the end has to be written understandable and uh, yeah that everyone can read it and understand it even if it's uh, the details are complex mm. um, yeah. and that is also yeah something that I wanted to include in the book the, the you know key points and uh, at least my thinking process is like that that I put the, the you know the, the most important thing the meaning and then you can add some details and uh, broaden your your perspective and one important thing um, uh, you, are the, the the exercises at the end because they put the theory in practice somehow even though I speak about the cases before but then it's also motivating for the reader to, you know, the, to, to move from the point of passivity to activity, to start to engage actively in the processes that we are speaking about or reading. Yeah, I'm just, for example, for, for the, for the it's a bit, Difficult, of course, for if you're just listening to a podcast. But I'm, I have the book here, which is published by uh, Thinkers Publishing uh, mm -hmm. from Belgium. A, a very beautiful book, very good quality paper, nice pictures. Uh, a lot of them by Leonard Oates. I think a lot of people know him. Uh, but I, I just uh, have a page here. Yeah, a typical page during a chess game, like creative thinking and flexibility. So we have a quote here by Eric, Eric Fromm. He's a uh, psychoanalyst and a philosopher. Then you have some key takeaways. You have some quotes by Kramnik. Mm -hmm. uh, the phenomenon of creativity is explained in the little box. You have Gary Kasparov having a quote and uh, some uh, some other um, cartoons in it. So it's a very uh, more or less difficult theme, I think, psychology and chess in a more or less in a quite of a light way, presented in a light way. Is that right? And was yeah. that your call to do it? Yeah, that's what I wanted to do it. But at the same time, you know, um, uh, creativity, we can take it uh, very lightly. We we don't know um, how important it is in life. I think in general, mm -hmm. say, okay, creativity, intelligence is more important, or at least, for example, in school system, um, we don't develop uh, mm -hmm. creativity. But it's very important from different aspects. You know, to be uh, creative, you need to be flexible. You need to open your mind. You need to. Um, you're stuck with one solution and you know fixate your point of view this will never lead to creativity and for, for example it's not such a um, just a word or <laughs> or simple um, uh, content but um, you know it's uh, it's a tip of the iceberg and if you want to be creative you need to overpass your fixed knowledge or, uh, or the knowledge that you are comfortable uh, with. And it's, uh, you need to dive into uncertainty, which is uh, for most of the people very stressful because they don't know the outcome for sure. And uh, uh, they are afraid to be creative. Uh, it's easier uh, to stuck with the solution that works, but it works to some extent, you know, um, the creativity can take you to <laughs> new fields, like Einstein said, <laughs> you know, intelligence can take you from point A to B, but creativity can take you everywhere. Yeah. Um, so yeah, and um, I want to emphasize the importance of the concepts that we might know in every, or we think we know in everyday life, but there is uh, one uh, exercise also on the, this topic, Unfortunately, the solution is <laughs> written and wrong, uh, but it's a good example, a really good example of um, showing us how we think in a box. And as much as we try to think outside the box, 
and we think we are creative, we are still caught in that limited way of thinking, limited box. And um, with also with this kind of exercises, I want to show the reader that creativity is may, might be something else than he thinks it is, <laughs> you know, that it's bigger, that it's uh, wider, that it, <laughs> you can develop it more than, uh, yeah, because for example, a lot of things, um, I also speak in the book about Dunning-Kruger effect. Uh, I think we know about particular thing, everything, everything that it is. <laughs> but most of the time we just know a bit and our confidence is unreal unrealistically high. Yes, that's um, true. Yeah, and even when we get, uh, um, only when we get additional information that uh, give us a wider perspective, uh, not until, th until then, we don't know how much we don't know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we are in a plateau scale, you know? <laughs> um, and I don't know, I want to uh, open the, the mind to so the reader uh, and you know, you, you can never, that is something that I've learned from the uh, therapeutic um, approaches that you can never do something instead of other person. Other person has to do something if he wants to approve by himself. Mm -hmm. But you know, you can open the door. Yes, he has to go through the door by himself. But yeah. uh, if he doesn't see the door, then he will never step Even forward. Not, no, correct. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. I see also a lot of quotes and proverbs in the book. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you collect them over the years or something? You see, you see a nice quote and you say, ah, that maybe I can use that one or something. Do you have a little black book in which you write down those quotes or something? Um, yeah, well, I wrote the book on the computer, you know, it was sure. many sketches. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, whenever, um, whenever I saw something, during my life <laughs> that uh, I think this might be interesting for my book. I just incorporated in it. I know the last thing that was my book was already written, but then I saw um, the, the um, interview with Placido Domingo. He said, mm -hmm. uh, if I rest, I rust. And it was uh, such a, <laughs> a good sentence, I think. Uh, and I had the, the chapter activity and said okay i have to write this yes you have to yeah. put it in the book yes yeah, yeah of course this is very dangerous because uh, it's never-ending process it can be <laughs> uh but okay at uh, some point i i had to start stop and that is something yeah yeah, yeah you also have some not only chess players of course but i i have a nice quote here by kevin durant an american basketball player he says uh, hard work beats talent when talent fails to work hard that's what mm -hmm. is quite it's a very nice nice quote. Yeah, it was in a chapter, yeah. in a discipline chapter, yeah. discipline, hard work, and persistence. Yeah, and that's uh, yeah, it's, it's great, yeah, to, great to read it. Yeah, if you can, if you read a quote, if you just have the book in your hands, it yes, mm -hmm. it can motivate yeah. people. Yeah, something yeah. just a quote like that. Yeah, yeah, because you know the the quotes from the people that are that achieved something, and we can all learn some uh, qualities from such a such people, such persons. Yeah, I some, mean, uh, we can learn from each person, we can learn something, <laughs> something if we sure. <laughs> take it the right way, but especially from, you know, so, well, well, yeah, well known, well known players, yeah. example, yeah, you like Durant, to, yeah, 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 you need to pass through many things and um, uh, <laughs> make something right to achieve things like um, for example, the rent and these quotes are. That's why, of course, we we have to understand what this person did that achieved this. And mm. um, these kind of quotes are also very um, nicely written. I don't know. It's uh, I, I cannot. I don't know how to write <laughs> uh, um, the same thing in a boring sentence. I don't know. It's not the same. You know. It, these quotes, they are juicy, <laughs> how to say, you know, and you yeah, remember them more easily or, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you also have a lot of uh, 
just quotes and some and proverbs from from chess players, yeah, mm -hmm. like and a lot of Kasparov, of course, but also Aronian and Anand. I saw some some Kramnik, of course. Who's your who's your favorite? Okay, you wrote it in the book. Who's your favorite chess player for the listeners? Uh -huh. who's, and who's your role model then? <laughs> yeah, well, um, okay. I don't know. Um, it's not that I know these chess players really in depth. I just um, get the feeling from their also nonverbal communication and their appearance. And yeah, I have a lot of uh, quotes from Kasparov, for example. And um, I think he, um, he put a lot of, uh, on this mental preparation, even though, you know, also Carlos and um, they. They don't like to lose. They act like they have nothing under control at some more <laughs> points uh, when we see their re reaction. But at the same time, it is very fascinating, at least to me, um, mm -hmm. how they, for example, after the loss, they return even stronger <laughs> to the next game, how they process these things. And uh, OK, again, maybe uh, Kaspar or Carlsen, they're, they're a bit more similar to my personality character. That's why I get them better than some uh, very peaceful chess player, which of course it's also um, quality by itself, but uh, that's why maybe I um, I get the players such as Kaspar and Karas and more than the mother. So I, I might say, yeah. These two are, <laughs> let's say, role model. But you know, I, I think that um, I don't like the word really role model because it's, um, it, I don't know why, it reminds me that we have to copy um, or we want to be just like them. But it's not like that. We just have to see what each person does good. Mm -hmm. Or bad, and we have to know how to, you know, um, incorporate these things in our own way. We have to uh, critically go through these um, traits and uh, skills that they have, and uh, evaluate them and adjust them to our. Uh, but for your own personal, um, yeah, interest and personal feelings, yeah. perhaps in your personal. Yeah. Life, for example, not yeah. Copying. So, it's not yeah. just not copying, but just asking because you mentioned the role model uh, that Caspar mm -hmm. was kind of a role model for you. You mentioned that in your book. Uh, mm -hmm. You also met him, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I met him. Uh, okay, on Olympiads. Yeah, sure. Distant meeting, but he came to Slovenia once for one event, and um, mm -hmm. I, I was a moderator there, and I played a female. Uh, okay. We briefly met. It's not like I would know him. <laughs> but do you think is it important for not only for chess players, perhaps for to have a kind of a role model to say, well, Kasparov, I'd like to be like him or I'd like to play chess like mm -hmm. him or, well, on my level, perhaps. But uh, is it helpful? I mean, yeah, it can gives you motivation to see, uh, yeah, a person that you admire and, uh, yeah. Uh, but it's also what I also thought a bit about. It, but it's not a, a bit of a thin line between having a role model and uh, saying, "Well, I want to be like him." But yeah. in the process, that you do not manage to be like that person, and that yeah, you, then yeah. then you got then you got then it changes a bit, and that you mm -hmm. envy him. Why is he successful, and why am I not successful? So that can turn into a negative feeling instead of a positive feeling. Yeah, it's always like this. I mean. Uh, it, like chess can be also negative if you approach it you know <laughs> not a good way also comparison with other people can be uh yeah harmful if you just see uh -huh, he has this and i don't mm -hmm. so you can be angry you know <laughs> on the whole world uh, if you start to uh, see things like this so of course yeah you have to approach it in a positive way and i also think um yeah, I think that uh, the role model doesn't mean I want to be him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I see what he's doing and he's doing this well. I see what he's getting at the end. Yeah, the result, I want to get this result. 
I want to, I don't know, for someone uh, there is fame, money, um, the, the mm. chess, uh, the level of chess playing that is good. It depends what is your value and what is your motivation. But at the end, um, I think we all have to think critically and, you know, um, it's our perspective, it's us who we have to improve and develop, not just copy. We cannot no. be a copy of someone, no, but that's right. uh, we can incorporate knowledge that we get from uh, understanding other people and why we choose and who we choose, of course, can depend on the um, our values um, and, uh, you know, if this person is someone that we admire, we can um, use him and analyze what he does uh, to, to, to try to use it for your own personal life. Yeah. In, yeah. On your, on your own life, if we don't understand with our thoughts, what he's doing, we cannot mm -hmm. just copy it. You know, but for example, I, when I was young, <laughs> um, my father tried to, to teach me in the beginning how to play chess. And we had this book, Carpo Casparo match mm -hmm. at home. And he said, okay, let's study chess. And he opened, you know, I was a small girl. <laughs> of course, I didn't understand half of the, their moves, you know, match for the world champion, Carpo Casparo. And he also didn't understand, but I was asking why they played this, why he played this, Carpo, how, can, how could I understand the move? I don't know, uh, knight A1, <laughs> if I <laughs> exaggerate. Yeah. But, and then he said, well, I don't know. You just play like him and it will be fine. You will be good, <laughs> but it doesn't go like that. Of course yeah, not. Sure. Um, yeah, so mm, you need to really understand what other yeah. person. Do you have another question? How, this is, the book is also a bit of designed as a kind of an autobiographical experience. How much is there of the book is autobiographical? Mm -hmm. And there were, well, are there some points that uh, did you have certain experiences uh, that, that you put in the book or uh, about you? And did you learn when you wrote a book something about your own behavior, for example? And could you improve and change something, for example? I thought mm -hmm. that you had, I read somewhere, I think, or maybe you told us some, that you had some problems uh, with, with time management. For example, in a game, yeah, is that yeah. something that you also have in in real life? Then is it something yeah. like uh, that you come late for appointments or that you uh, that you have problems uh, with time? Uh, yeah, um, something I like think, that. I think um, my um, time management problems derive from um, poor decision making <laughs> and ah, okay. uh, you know, a bit of. Uh, perfectionism I mean or you know you, I, I don't know um, which which solution to choose because you know I want to optimize the solution and that is something I must say I don't know if it's a, because of the book but during life I've learned mm. a bit and now it's better also in chess it's better of course now I, when I don't play that much then I start to think on the beginning it's different kind of thing but uh, just not to use, you know, too much time for one uh, middle game move because it, uh, this is something psychological, not... Uh, <laughs> um, usually it doesn't have a, a, a content reason <laughs> because you don't get to a better solution after half an hour in comparison to 10 minutes, for example. Mm -hmm. You just cannot decide and then jump and from one solution to another and this is not systematic thinking and decision making and um yeah um some things i uh, improved <laughs> during my life but um and of course the book was also um helpful for my self-reflection of the things that um I've learned through chess and something that I can learn, <laughs> I can still learn. Uh, of course, it's never ending story. Personal development lasts for a lifelong, <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, but yeah, I think that chess gave me um, 
a lot of things that are very useful in in life. Um, really, when you see, uh, I don't know, people who are afraid to try new things, are afraid of um, not succeeding, losing. It's not like I like to lose and succeed, but you know, during um, the chess career, you have to learn that you will not win all the game. Yeah. yeah and so how, um, and also how to how to how to cope with when you have a series of losses. Yeah, you told, also wrote in yeah. the book, I think, where yeah. you lose a couple of games, five stuck, five in a row or something. Mm. What to do? <laughs> yeah, uh, it, it's uh, something that is difficult, of course. No one says this is easy. Mm -hmm. uh, but it happens in chess, it happens in life, but in chess, you know, you learn it uh, the easy way. <laughs> in life, it's even more difficult if you don't possess the skill of um, calming down and, you know, um, changing the perspective, I don't know, the catastrophization, because uh, the, the, also um, the perception of a loss is a very interesting thing. Okay, in chess, Again, we have a draw and we like to make draws because we are afraid to lose. Mm -hmm. But yeah, eventually you have to, if you want to be top, you have to get over it. So mm -hmm. it's not that chess um, just has uh, these skills and if you will play chess, you will automatically get it. It's not like that. It's work, of course, but uh, it gives you the opportunity and it shows you the outcome if you will not work on this skill. Mm. And the outcome will be worse than if you, you know, improve. Um, and uh, for example, this perception of um, losses or uh, something that is not success is very important in life because at least in Slovenia, we should avoid failure <laughs> for any cost. And that's uh, something that will, um, in the long run, just puts you in very passive situation you will not approach things but you will avoid challenges and you will not see things as challenge but as a threat and here is also a very um, interesting quote by Edison I think uh, he said um, it's not that I failed I just found one way that was not successful but it's a you know way this is a, a, a process to get to the goal that you uh, that you set. So it's a process of growth. It's not mm. catastrophe. It's not a disaster. It's not mm. you know something that ruin your self esteem uh, as many people um, see it. Yeah, but it's still hard. Yeah? If you lose five yeah, games in a row, of course. Nothing is easy. But the sixth game, you win again. Yeah. <laughs> What? You lose five in a row, but number six, you win then. And yeah. It makes you feel happy then. Yeah. Okay. That is something that, um, yeah, you also um, get, get in chess because you will not lose all the games. Some, even if you lose five, as you said, eventually you will uh, come to the, to, to the win and next tournament will be better. And uh, you will see that it's if you, you know, if one tournament is not good then it doesn't mean that it will never be good yeah. again sure i, I read today uh, read something on, on in the internet i think on facebook of a player who played on plays online chess and um if he plays uh, a couple of who loses a couple of games he gets very angry and he starts throwing his telephone through uh, <laughs> against the wall and his ipad or something do you have any advice for people yeah. like that how how should they how should they yeah, deal with it's this? Not so easy, with this you know. It's not easy, of course, but but I think there's a lot of people who have get very angry and very aggressive, especially on the internet when they're playing online chess because of the well, they're they're not visible, they don't play under their real name, for example. Uh, mm -hmm. do, do you yeah. well, is this something a new a new phenomenon or something that people get so aggressive and, and especially online? Not only in chess, but also you can see that in comments when you read an article or something and people comment on something that it get, people get very aggressive. Yeah, also in this pandemic, for example. Yes, okay, okay. I think there are a lot of causes uh, for these during the pandemic. I think the, the stress level in, and the anxiety, depression, aggression has rise uh, 
by itself, by the, the you know, um, all the restrictions and social distancing is something that uh, doesn't help with physical, uh, with psychological well-being. So for sure, we start with a higher level of <laughs> arousal. And yes, of course, chess can be irritating, of course. Um, yeah, no one says it's not. Um, but the problem is, again, this reflection when you let the emotions take over your um, cognitive system, then you cannot control them, of course, and then they um, exaggerate and uh, you cannot narrow your focus anymore. So, um, and yeah, you can do um, very harmful things, not just to others, but also to yourself, uh, I don't know tilting and you ha you want to regain what you have lost and uh, but again also as Lasker said that on in chess lies and hypocrisy does not survive so you know you will not be able to trick yourself uh, on that chess board because there is the objectivity objectivity is something that is also very important uh, in life um, that you have your perspective of the world, of people, of life that is as objective as it, it can be. If it is distorted, then you will not get the feedback as you want <laughs> and you will get the punishment sooner or later. And so this is something that you first need to be aware of. If you're not aware of these things, nothing can be done. <laughs> you need to be willing to change something. Otherwise, um, nothing will happen now. Yeah? No, nothing will happen. It will be the same all the time, yeah, or sure. worse, not the same, but worse. Yeah. And when you say, okay, I'm doing this, <laughs> um, that is why you need some information. Maybe sometimes that, you know, um, if someone tells you that this is a thing, common thing for people to do, then you might realize, huh, I'm doing the same thing. You have men. Uh, um, distorted thinking, distorted way of emotion, uh, exaggeration, exaggerated emotions and so on. So uh, then you can realize it uh -huh, and then you have to realize it over and over again because you know these are um, a lot of these things are um, uh, you're doing unconsciously <laughs> and it's not so easy to uh, even notice them. But when you notice, you know, then you, you can start working on them. I don't know if you are angry, you just need to set yourself some rules, for example, when you lose so many games and you, you have to stop, even though it's difficult to you know, stop when you are losing, I don't know, elo rating and you want to regain it, of course. And then it's easier to say um, to the opponent, uh, I don't know, some ugly words than yeah. to... <laughs> to yeah. uh, calm yourself down, uh, then use some strategies to stop ruminating, then you have, you know, the strategies how to narrow your focus on the process, not on the result and stuff like that. You have uh, techniques if you are willing to change something. And yeah, yeah. I think that uh, uh, chess players, if you want to be successful, um, it's not only chess that you have to improve, but also um this psychological <laughs> things or life uh, uh, skills that you need to improve to um, get over such as things that happen inevitably i mean yeah. it's so, you cannot avoid it that's why we explained the title of your book then again yeah improve your life by playing a game <laughs> and uh, learn how to think learn how to turn your life into activities into lifelong skills yeah so with yeah. it's that's so that's the takeaway of the book, yeah. Are there some more key takeaways from the book for, for, for chess players or for people in general who read the book? So some key key conclusions said so to speak from, from the book. Yeah, I mean uh, yeah, first you need to be um, um, open-minded, you know, prepared to prepared to um, develop yourself to grow to uh, you have to be uh, flexible uh, in order to read the book of course <laughs> but uh, read the book, yes. um, i think 
yeah, I think this is a mindset that uh, everyone has to have it. You know, the, this the world is moving. The 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 company, if it doesn't change, if it, with the, the course of you know life, it will collapse. And the same is with people. Um, it's not like you know we will die tomorrow. We we are living. <laughs> so if we live, uh, we have to live and you know live fully life and um, I think this is something that uh, is the beginning of uh, the search and uh, if you are prepared to do this then um, you're also approaching things differently you know you're approaching things positively you want to find something that will be useful for you and you can find something useful everywhere <laughs> and yeah um, otherwise everything is of no use, you know, uh, I know this, I know that, I know everything, then, okay, you will just live the same life from now till that. <laughs> okay, yeah. Uh, so yeah, this is something that um, is the, the uh, proposition <laughs> to start uh, to read also uh, my book and um, yeah, I, I think that the topics um are of the kind that uh it's good to be reminded of them from mm -hmm. time to time uh even though if you are aware of them and uh, <laughs> uh yeah you, you know, just sometimes you just have to repeat it and you have to think about it yeah yeah, uh, yeah to you know to um, things that are yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. to, to reflect to um as I said, a lot of these things uh, uh, are um, unconscious and you need mm. to reflect on them consciously sometimes. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, the book has its structure that goes <laughs> um, through different phases of development, actually, mm. <laughs> yeah. at the end. So, yeah. 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 That's a challenge, a challenging book, I think, not only for chess players, but I can only I could recommend to pick up a copy. Uh, it's mm -hmm. called again for all the listeners: "Improve Your Life by Playing a Game" and uh, by Jana Krivec. Doctor Jana Krivec, <laughs> Krivec, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they have to. Okay, um, yeah, great. I think, um, yeah, but also struck me a bit. Um, that you, you're not really on social media, right? Do you think social media is a bit of a, uh, it distracts a lot of people from normal and from daily life, I think, yeah? Is it on purpose that you don't, not really, you're not active on social media like Twitter or something or Instagram or yeah. whatever? Yeah, I have Facebook. I mean, you cannot avoid modern technology and no, you have to right. use it in, yeah, for your own good and, um, yeah, but at the same time, of course, um, it can be a very um, time wasteful <laughs> media and you can uh, spend too much time for um, um, things that should not be priority in your life. And um, um, this is a big um, danger of uh, social media, I think. Um, I try to balance my life mm -hmm. with <laughs> different kind of things, outdoor activities and so on. And uh, meeting people, social contacts are very important. Of course, you can get it in a way through social media, but I don't believe they are um, as quality <laughs> yeah. um, as in, in, in person. So uh, that's why I, um, I'm, um, I'm keen of uh, balance of uh, all the things that you do you the exaggeration it's not good in in any direction so yeah That's right. i'm on your facebook so, but even this i think it's sometimes too much <laughs> yeah yeah okay so it's better to pick up a book for example your book and to read a book instead of going through all some twitter messages or whatever yeah, <laughs> yeah. So it's better to yeah. facebook okay <laughs> Yeah, okay. You still have time to, uh, at the end of the day, for five minutes, if you check Twitter sure. or others, I don't know, I, that, uh, at least I assume, then you still get all the, the important <laughs> messages <laughs> and you didn't miss anything if you lack social media for a few hours. 
Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. So, I advise to people pick up a book, and the best is to pick up your book, for example, to get some mm -hmm. self reflection and to think about themselves and think about a bit of about your chess. And uh, yeah, it was a pleasure talking to you. I thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Eric, for inviting me. I'm uh, always, I always like to speak about this topic. Um, and it was my pleasure to, and honor to join you for interview. Okay. Thank you very much. And I uh, wish you all the best for the future and for your future, maybe in a second book, for example, and your other, other academic uh, life, of course. Well, now, yeah. Well, now I don't think about the second book. No. <laughs> it's a big project of mine, a life project. So uh, now, yeah, um, not not in, a, in a near future. Okay. <laughs> I, I am writing articles uh, on chess. So, and yeah, okay. right now I have one article uh, on chess, scientific article in one journal, scientific and the review. So I hope that will pass. <laughs> okay. What is it about? Can you tell me something about it? Uh, it's from my PhD. Ah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so it's about um, describing the characteristics and uh, conceptualization of procedural chunks in chess. Okay, well, sounds yeah. good. So I have to invite you again to tell me something more about that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Thanks again, and uh, hope to talk to you soon somehow. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Dear listeners, I hope you enjoyed this podcast about chess and psychology with Dr. Jana Krivec. I will put up a link to the publisher in the description of the episode if you want to find out more about the book and perhaps order it at Thinkers Publishing. Subscribe to this podcast if you want to hear more conversations with people from the world of chess. If you want to become a better chess player, I would like to recommend the Master Classes by World Chess. The next Masterclass session will be with Grandmaster Veselin Topolov and you can get a discount by using the code LTAC10. I will also put a link up in the show notes. My name is Erik van Reem. I will be back soon with another episode of Let's Talk About Chess. Stay healthy and keep on playing. <laughs>